Man, the Texans offense was atrocious, man, but, you know, I can't really blame them, man, because for multiple reasons. First, you got to look at the situation, and then you got to look at the other team. The fact is, man, the Texans were out there in New Orleans, and their families are stuck in Houston, man, in the middle of a hurricane. I don't usually let bad performances slide, but I'm I'm gonna have to let this one slide, cause, man, you know there are people too. You just can't. They have things on their mind. That's what I'm trying to say. But I did see some good things, man. Some great things actually. It's just a preseason game. Yes, we had a total of zero points, but hey, at least we looked better than the Titans. I mean, the Titans had their starters all the way up into the fourth quarter. They couldn't score up until the Bears put in their fourth stringers. Like, come on, that's pathetic. Anyways, on to the Texans. Let's start off with Tom Savage, man. Or let's just start off with the starting unit, the offensive line, man. The offensive line played pretty bad. The whole offensive line. Everyone. There was not a single offensive lineman from the starting unit that I could say had a solid game. I saw Breno get beat twice. I saw Martin get beat. And, of course, Jeff Allen got manhandled. And he even got to the point, man, where they sat down Sua Filo and replaced him with Greg Manx. And when that happened... That's when the offense actually started moving. But we weren't able to put up points with Tom Savage at the starting spot. And I can't blame him. I can't. Savage made all the right throws, all the right reads. But at the end of the day, the only thing the Saints were doing all game was blitzing. Literally. Every other play, blitz, blitz, blitz. Blitz. And when you have receivers like Dress Anderson out there, man, who's not really a receiver that can make people miss, you can blitz like that. Because I guarantee you, man, if Hopkins and Will Fuller are there, they can't blitz us. Because we have someone that can consistently beat people, someone that can consistently make people miss, and Will Fuller... Yes, we have Bruce Ellington, who I think had an outstanding game again, but that's it. Jalen Strong, he, yeah, he can catch, man, but he's not the type of people that can make you pay for leading them one-on-one. -on -one. The way the Saints were playing, man, was just make Savage throw the ball quick, which he was, and credit to Savage, man. Savage, for once... He actually got rid of the ball quick. And maybe it was O'Brien telling Sean Payton to do that stuff. Because we, we don't know that, man. They could probably pre-game plans and stuff to help each other out. So, Savage was actually getting rid of the ball quick. And he was making the right throws, the right reads. But his receivers were getting tackled immediately. Because when you're getting blitzed every play, you don't have the time to sit sit there and read the field. You just got to go to your check down. And the check down got tackled every single time. So the Saints kept at it because it was working. Our receivers weren't winning their one-on-ones. And Lamar Miller actually looked better if Tyler Irvin... Looked bad, honestly. And it kind of sucks that we didn't get to see Deontay Foreman because of injury and Alfred Blue because of injury. But I'm pretty sure they already have this roster spot locked up, so it's no worry. And now when we um move on to Deshaun Watson, man. I think Deshaun Watson had a way better game than last game. Last, last week was atrocious. This week was, you know, a little better. He did have... Like about three questionable throws, 
One of them being, of course, that interception which he just overthrew Wendell Williams. And the uh, safety, I want to say, picked it off. And the other one was, he was about to get sacked and he just threw it up there. He just threw it up there. If that had been a better safety, that safety picks it off. And there's another throw where he threw it right at the linebacker. That's questionable, man. You shouldn't be making those throws, Sean. But, again, I can't blame him. He's a rookie. He's still learning. And the fact that all the Saints were doing was blitzing him the whole time. Yeah, it's not going to... He's not going to succeed, man. And then he had at least four drops, I would say, from his receivers today. Or that day. So... It's going to be hard to be successful. And then not to mention the stupid penalties. The, the illegal formation penalties, man. Not, like, how do you mess that up? You just get there and line up. Uh, I don't know if it's a player issue or if it's a quarterback's issue that should, you know, correct them. I would probably put it on the quarterback. Go ahead and correct it. Savage, Watson. And then Brandon Whedon came in. And honestly... Once Brandon Whedon came in, I just stopped watching because when Whedon goes in, it just gets boring and pointless, man. Because we already know what we're going to get from Whedon. We already know that most of those guys aren't going to make the team. So, yeah, there's that. And now let's move on to the defense, man. The first thing I noticed when the defensive starting unit came out, Joel Heath, starter opposite Watt. He hasn't been there in OTAs. He hasn't been there in training camp. But... He's back now, and he started on the first day. What does that tell me? He's most definitely the starter. How I predicted before, thank God, because Covington, do not want him out there. Now, the Texans starting defense, <laughs> they did amazing, as always. So, there's not much else to say there. Yes, the Saints did get a 3 Get same starting offense got three points on our starters, but they took out JJ Watt, Jadavion Clowney, and Jonathan Joseph for that whole drive. And then w once they finally got into the red zone, they put him Jonathan Joseph back in, and what do you know? They stopped the drive. So what does that tell me? That tells me that Jonathan jo Joseph is still our clear number one corner. He's still a solid corner. So, our starting unit did amazing, man. Amazing. And the awesome thing, man, is that our second string defense held Drew Brees and his starting offense to zero points. Can you believe that, man? Like, that's crazy. The Saints had their starters in all the way down until probably like a two-minute warning. <laughs> and they couldn't score against our backups. Big, bad Drew Brees couldn't score up against our backups, man. That's just awesome to hear. Imagine had JJ and, and Clowney been there. See, that's why I don't really mind. It's because, look, we were missing. JJ and Clowney only played one drive. Joseph only played one drive and a handful of plays after that. And then after that, after the second drive, the Texans benched everyone on defense except for Kevin Johnson. So, honestly, if if we had kept all our starters in there, man, we we probably hold the Saints to zero points. Had it been a, a real game, we hold the Saints to zero points. And keep in mind, man, this is the number one offense from last year. So, that's pretty crazy. And, of course, our offense did lay an egg. But, I can't blame them. We didn't have Hopkins. We didn't have Wolf Fuller. We didn't have Braxton Minner. We didn't have Deontay Foreman, Alfred Blue, Dwayne Brown. Had this been a regular season game, had our players been playing, we can put up points. I, I have no doubt about it. Because I'm pretty sure Hopkins is going to snag all over their corners. I'm sure if Wolf Fuller was there, 
he would burn one of their corners real quick on a slant route and probably take it all the way. Because that's the type of a receiver Wolf Warner is. And the thing that surprises me with Bruce Ellington, man, is he's been able to do all this without DeAndre Hopkins. Imagine him and Hopkins. Hopkins is our number one weapon. He's our number one target. Teams are going to focus on DeAndre Hopkins no matter what. When they focus on Hopkins, that's going to leave a huge part of the field wide open for Bruce Ellington to feast off of them. And then Will Fuller comes back around week six. Will Fuller has the ability to stretch the field, guys. So, Bruce Ellington is going to be a huge part of our offense once. Fuller and Hopkins are back, man. I just can't wait to see. I honestly believe we could be a top 15 offense just because of Bruce Ennington. Because the way our receiving core is right now, it's really talented. And it's funny because two weeks ago, I, I would have said the complete opposite. I would have said all we had was Hopkins. But with the addition of Bruce Ennington, that changes everything, man. He brings something to the table that Fuller can't, that Hopkins can't, that Braxton Miller can't. And of course, after them three, we got Braxton Miller, who's still learning, I'll give him that, and Jalen Strong, who's probably a, the same type of receiver as DeAndre Hopkins, but not as good a catcher or good a route runner. But he's a, a great red zone threat, so I'm really feeling excited about this offense. I know they laid an egg, but you got to see it for what it is, guys. Yes, they laid an egg, but you got to look at how it happened. You can't just be like, man, they put up zero. They suck. No, no, no. It's just what the Saints were doing, man. It's, it's what the Saints were doing, and not, not many teams are going to do that to us because not many teams are going to dare to put one-on-one -on -one coverage on Hopkins because all you got to do is throw it up to him and you'll catch it. Like when Savage threw it up to Strong and he didn't catch it, Hopkins would have caught that and the Saints probably would have stopped glitching. Now, there is one player that really stood out to me and that's outside linebacker Eric Lee. And you guys probably saw him too. He got two sacks and... The guy came out of nowhere for me. I didn't even think he was going to be a guy to even do stuff. So it's good for him. Maybe he can make the team. Let's see how he does up against Dallas this Thursday coming up. So he might make the team because as of right now, the only outside linebackers we have is Merciless, Clowney, and Brandon Scarlett. I would really like to have more depth because, you know, last year what happened, on Simon got hurt. And we have Brandon Scarlett hurt as well. So at one point, we only had two outside linebackers. And what really sucked is Watt was also hurt. So Clowney had to be everywhere doing everything. So hopefully Eric Lee can make the team because we do need some more outside linebackers. We're pretty stacked at middle linebacker. But we need outside linebackers. So Eric Lee, keep your eye on him next week. That being said, though, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay safe, guys, throughout this hurricane. I've been fortunate enough to not have anything happen to me. Yeah, my internet did go out on Friday, but... I'm still going to try to get this video up to you guys through Hotspot. I'm attempting this on Sunday. A day after... The game, because I didn't really try to do it on Saturday, because I was watching McGregor and Mayweather go at it, which was surprisingly a better fight than I thought it would be, so, yeah, that, that's good. So, anyways, with that being said, guys, thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys later.